microphone. I think I need one more. And so I want you to, we will start with uh, introduce yourself and say how many children and grandchildren you have. Okay? If y'all can remember all that. <laughs> so we'll go ahead. Let's start right there. Go ahead. Pastor Crawford, right? Is your mic? Okay, it's not on. Make sure your green light is on. Red light means it's on pause. Pastor Carlton Wright, uh, six children. Uh, Pastor Carlton Wright, have six children and 11 grandkids and two great grandkids. Yes. Um, Pat Ogan, and I have 20, I have five children, 21 grandchildren, I have 11 great grandchildren. Hey, Mother Mildred. I have, I have had one daughter, but she passed away in 206, and then she, uh, she has seven children, and now I have 34 grandkids. Woo! Hallelujah. And I'm a great, great, great grandma. Amen. Great, great, great grandma. <laughs> Go ahead. I have, my name is Marlon Foster, and I have two children. I have <laughs> Come on, daughter, you can help her out. Praise God. <laughs> I have two children and I have mm, they scattered out so I don't know. Take a good shot at six grandchildren. Yeah, six grandchildren. And nine have, Yeah, nine great grandchildren. Great. Great oh, nine great grandchildren. Praise God. Right. Amen. Right. So, Mother Foster, we're going to go around. What is your favorite scripture that has kept you along the way or saying that you may have? My greatest saying is, I always say, by the grace of God. Amen. That's my favorite saying all the time. Every time I do something, I used to laugh at myself when I was, as I think back on, but the Lord is good anyway. Because I'd be getting ready to go out into the world to do my thing. And I would always say, by the grace of God. I'd be over there to pick you up by the grace of God. <laughs> I've always said that. So my pastor, my late pastor, Pastor Eve, used to say, I'm going to preach on that one day, Sister Foster, by the grace of God. Everything you say, so that's, uh, it's by the grace of God. Now, where's that sound at? I, will, I guess it's all in all the scriptures. Yeah. But I always say, by the grace of God. My favorite scripture it's the 23rd Psalm. Amen. 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 Mother Mildred? Mine is the, the, the Lord's Prayer. And He has blessed me all these years. And, and my favorite is, uh, I will lift my eyes to the hill from which cometh my help. Amen. My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. He will not suffer so for to be moved. We that believe in Him shall not fail for everlasting life. Amen. 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 And, and, and who knows what scripture that is? What Psalms is that? My help cometh from the Lord. Psalm 121. I, just want, I want to see what they, do they know out here. <laughs> okay, Mother Pat. Um, I, just, I, don't, I don't think I have a particular scripture, um, but I stay close to the word. And, and I, I, you know, I'd walk with the Lord, but I pick up the word and say, okay, this is what I need for it to do. And the Lord would give me those scriptures every day to, I, I mean, I, I don't think, uh, if anything, I would get into Ephesians because this is what I wanted the church to be like. And I just really got close when, when I get into the scripture. And especially in Psalms, I'd get in and I'd start singing the Psalms. And I got it really close because, he, like, she had this do the 90, uh, in the 90s this week. I was just singing them all day long, and I'd sing them all week long. So I was just putting it in my spirit. Amen. Pastor Wright, go ahead. Amen. I, I do have quite a few uh, scriptures <laughs> that are favorites, but uh, she said name. So uh, 
Um, I, truly, the Lord is my shepherd. That's truly one of them. And then uh, I'm going to name another one. I can do all things through Christ. And right. another one I'm saying, trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Right. So those are my favorite. Amen. And I tell everybody, stay with God. God will stay with you. Yeah. And I know that's the truth. God never leaves you. But you might leave him, but he never leaves you. So I encourage everybody everywhere I go to stay with God. Amen. Okay, do we have, who has our first question that we want to have for our panel of grandparents? you have a question that you want to? Minister Smith has a microphone. Is that you, Sister? Okay, Sister. Deaconess Kiera has one. Y'all don't be shy. There's a whole bunch of wisdom up here. Y'all ain't shame to tell y'all age, are you? I'm not. Okay, let's get the ages, what we have. What are the? I'm 73. 73? That's going to be 87. 87? 65. 65? 71. 71. Now, who, where the mathematicians at? You see how much wisdom that's up here? Amen. Go ahead, daughter. With you guys being on the battlefield for the Lord a long time, what is it that kept you? I know God kept you, but what is it that you maybe have laid hold of or done to keep you connected to Christ? Doing the warfare. Um, that would pull me back in about every time. And, that, and having a repentant heart. And he would line me back up. And he'd say, now, make that 180 degree and get rid of that, whatever it is, and, and walk away from it. But doing the warfare, as God has taught me how to do, to stand up against the, the devil and, to, and make him let go of me. Make him. I, I forcibly make him let go of me because if I don't, he'll come back the next round and take me out. Or he can't take me out. That's interesting for you to say that because... Um so the new parents that are coming up, they need to understand that, you know, even the song you sung, it says on the battlefield, but why are you on the battle? Who are you battling against? So I'm quite sure when you're saying, when she's saying warfare, you know, with children, with circumstances, and marriages and all of that, we have to understand that we have to take our position on the wall or on our knees. Mm -hmm. Amen. Anyone else want to speak to that? Go ahead. I, I can say what has helped me is, uh, Matthew 6 and 33 says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. He said, All these things shall be added. And I believe a firm a prayer life, uh, reading God's word, and confession every day, and yielding your heart to the Lord. We have a confession on our prayer that we have almost every day, and we submit to the Lord our heart, our soul, our mind, our will. And by that way, we ask the Lord to give us the ear to hear what his spirit would say. And then we say, I trust in the Lord with all thine heart, lean not to thine own understanding in all thy ways. And so God can direct you. And then we ask for the Lord to give us a spirit of obedience and continue to want to please him in all of our ways. So submission and relationship and uh, communicating with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ it should be a priority in your life and that truly will help you stay strong be strong and get you through every circumstance that you go through and what is good bad in life you're gonna have always something amen uh, Job let us know as a sparks fly up a man is born in trouble so how many know it's always gonna be Adversity is always going to be something in life. And no matter if you're saved or not saved, amen, you're still going to have things that you're going to have to go through. Amen. Um, I just wanted to ask, um, me being a mother, I'm still fairly new, I'm 28. Um, I play... Um, Bible verses on a CD, but what else can I do to engage my kids to learn more about Jesus? Well, 
But you know, trials come to make you strong. <laughs> and that's what I found that kept me closer. Uh, lots of people, uh, I was telling my son, uh, we pray for God's blessing to fall upon us when we're in trouble. And then just soon God bless us, then we lay it aside. Mm -hmm. uh, I have found out, and I used to do it when I was younger, Lord, if you do this for me, I will not do this no more. And I would end up doing it again. But as I got older with wisdom, I found out that instead of, now I pray for the Lord's blessing to bless me. And when he does do it, I don't cast it aside. I build up on it. Ooh, come on now. You know, I build up on it. And that's how it has kept me, you know. Uh, Lord, if you lift me up out from my sick bed, I'll do this. But when he lifts me up, I give him the praise. And then I build more up on it. And, and I'm just, I understand that old deacon of our church used to say, I'm setting up my temple. My, you know, I'm building, you know, I'm building up, I send up. So when I pray every day to the Lord, you know, for a blessing, and he blessed me, then I'm so grateful, I just keep on building up on it more and more. And to you, young lady, you're talking about your, you, you play your CDs and things and everything. But if you will go like when Addie comes to the house, and she'd be in there playing and everything. All of a sudden, I'd call her to me. I said, come here. Grandma's got a song I want you to learn. And I sing along with her. And then I get praises. To, so I don't just play it. For I do it with her, you know. You know, and so you, instead of playing, when you're playing these CDs, for act these out with your children. Like, like I heard someone here speak this morning, you know. Sing along with your child, because that's all I do is sing all the time. Around house, my voice has gotten weaker. And I was telling my daughter, my daughter said, why don't you sing? I said, because it's too high, you know. But I, uh, I give, you know, I say, Lord, do this for me. Do it for me right now, you know. Uh, you know, and, and like the song where I say, Lord, do it, you know. And I'll be doing it. And, you know, I'll be saying, you know, Lord, do this for me, you know. My child, when I can't see him, he's not in my sight, you know. I said, right now. And I know he will. I know he'll do it right now, because I know I, I've called on him, and I know he can answer right now. You know, he's a God you can't hurry, but sometimes he'll just come right away, you know, for you. So that's what I'm saying. Just sing along with your children. Amen. You know, pray with your children. Do Amen. everything with your children. Mother and Mildred, you want to add on to that? It'll pay off. Uh, I have been brought up in church when I was little. Our neighbor, when we didn't, when our parents couldn't take us, we went to church with our neighbors. Yes. So I have God been in my life since I was a little child, me and my twin sister. And so I, I had took my grandkids, taught them about the Lord too. So they, they why they like they are now. And I have had breast cancer in 1998. Uh, and, uh, and then in 210, I had another breast cancer come up. But I'm still here and I'm cancer free. I keep going back and I'm cancer free. I have God in my life. He has took care of me. He didn't let me live to be 87 years old. Amen. Amen. We, anyone else have another question? Um, 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 Sister Holden, then Bishop, and then Bishop has one. Okay, Sister okay. DeAndre. Okay, y'all good. I ain't got to force none out of y'all. Well, my question Go ahead. is, I'm a young grandmother, um, three years now, and I wanted to ask, because my grandchildren live out of the city, What's a good way for me to stay connected with them in the Lord? How do I stay connected to my grandkids with God? What should I do? You got any suggestions on how I can connect with them? They live out of town. You, you can call them and give them some good scriptures and pray for them and pray with them and always encourage them. Amen. We have to encourage our children to accept Christ in their life and then learn how to pray and have a personal relationship with God. And that's one of the best legacies we can, legacy we can live with. Give our children, as I heard uh, Prophet Adrian said, that, you know, we, we 
we, we remember, we want them to remember the Christ-like things as the legacy. Amen. And the best thing you can teach your children is how to pray and have a relationship with God. And to make sure they know God for their self. And when I say for their self, they need to know the word. That's when you know the word. You said you should know the truth. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the truth should set you free. Amen. Or make you free. However. But see, when you know the truth, nobody can deceive you. <laughs> Amen. And, and, and also, teach them how to practice the presence of God. And the Bible says, thou will keep you in perfect peace. Oh, yes. With mind. That means relationship with God. There. Uh, praised him all the time. Brother Amen. David said, I will bless the Lord, what? At all times. Oh, yes. His praises shall continue. See, relationship was one of the most important things mm -hmm. that keeps you near to the cross. Amen. Amen. And uh, uh, always I, keep God first, put in your life. Yeah. No matter what happened, bad thing happened. You know, can't help that, you know. And the old devil busy, you know. He keep up busy. But always put him first in your life. And forgive people. You don't care no evil in your heart. You, you, can, you cannot live forever and have an evil heart. You got to have a good heart. Right, right. So I forgive them. Somebody do something to me, I pray for them. I don't, I don't, care. I don't have no nothing against them. That's right. yeah. So that's one yeah. way I thank God let me live and my twin sister as long as we have. Yeah. So we always put God first. Amen. Also, um, I have a grandson that I'm very close to. I'm close to her, but I'm really close to him. And we sang together. Uh, I have one around singing in different places. And, and now he's away from me, you know. It's a long story about that. But anyway, I let him know that my phone line is always open. Yes. I don't care what time it is. Yes. Uh, you want to call me, you can call me anytime. Uh, you're never going to bother Grandma, you know. Anytime you want to call Grandma, call me, you know. And I've had him to call me at 3 o'clock in the morning with a song on his heart. And we'll start singing it and going over it. So let your phone line be open just like the phone line to God is always open. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let your phone line always be open. No matter what, when you need me, grandbaby, hey, I'm there for you. Call grandma. And you're not going to make grandma angry. Grandma don't mind waking up for you. Okay? Amen. And just to add on to um, Sister Holder's question is, um, we're in an interconnected world now. Right? So... Uh, Video calls are very common now, right? Uh, even you could be, feel like you're in the same room by using uh, video chat and stuff like that to stay connected to your, your grandchild, right? I mean, we know what's going on with Addie, right? Because uh, she know even know how to, to video call us, right? Mm -hmm. Because it, she wants to stay connected and wants to tell us. So that same way you could do that with that child that's out of town. Uh, in this day and age, I love the way a mother said, the phone line worked. Amen. And uh, God has made technology accessible so that you could communicate with your children and your grandchildren that are, uh, uh, that are away. Amen? Amen. My question to you is uh, in as little of words as possible. You right? No preaching message. This one for this question is... When you reached great grandparenthood, did you feel blessed or did you feel old? Blessed. I feel blessed. Blessed. Yeah. And why? Blessed. Oh, go with it, but I feel more blessed than I do old. <laughs> 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 uh, you only you only old where you look. <laughs> aging, aging, nothing but a number. Amen. I, Amen. I feel blessed. Matter of yeah, fact, my grandkids yeah. kept me, you know, yeah. uh, uh, to stay young. Yeah. So, right. so last yeah. time, I guess I feel younger than what I really am, which I look in the mirror and realize, yeah. you know. But other than that, I, you know, I feel like I can do anything, yeah. you know, with my grandkids. So then I felt really blessed. And sometimes. And that's why I don't mind telling how old I am. And sometimes they think you, they try to boss you. Yeah. But you yeah. let them know, I'm the boss. You, you. I'm the <laughs> yeah. But I love all my grandkids. I have one now, a grandson little. He on dialysis. And he's 42 years old. And he's been with me now for 11 years. Yeah, I'm a nurse sometimes, but I still help him, you know. And he, he still loves grandma on his way, you know. So 
I'm blessed to have all my grandkids. I love them all. Amen. Yeah. We got yeah. Sister Deandra, and then we have Deacon Dale. Oh, I, I see some other hands. Uh, Carly, what you got? I want to thank y'all for letting my granddaughter, Deandra and, and Annie. Those are my grandkids. Thank and, you. And she have really loved y'all, and, and her life is really happy. And she tried to help me, too, man. She come along and help me. Yep. And I want y'all to it. pray for her that she keep on coming. Going oh, to yeah, that ain't going to stop. Amen. <laughs> um, I got a question. It's for my grandmother first, and then anybody else can add on to it. So my question for you, grandmother, is before you pass on the glory, what is it that you are believing for your grandchildren and your great-grandchildren and your great-great-grandchildren? What is it that you believe in for as far as before you pass on the glory? What are you believing um, to see in us or to see happen? Yeah. What are you believing for your children and grandchildren before you le go to glory what is that you want you believe in God for to see take place in their always, lives always put God in your life and, and don't forget him because he he the one to keep you alive see? and he watches he see everything what you're doing so try to live nice and, and peaceful and don't do things out there you know you, you're against you know you know right and wrong so do right and don't do wrong amen next we'll go with pastor and then go down you want to add to that what you're believing for? Believing that they will give their life to Christ. Yeah. That's one of my greatest desires. Amen. Amen. Um, I'm really the same. I'm praying for salvation all the way down. And I, I believe that they'll get their lives right with prayer and, and bringing that prayer forward. And I, I even go into the tenth generation if we make it that far, you know. I said for the ones that's coming, that I don't even know, but I'm believing for salvation and for the blessings of the Lord to come on down to them as well as they came on me. Amen, Mother Foster. Well, I can, I'm gonna piggyback on everybody else. I'm just praying and believing and telling my children to get right and meet me up there. That's, my, that's, that's a my, word. That's what I mean. <laughs> that's right. I can preach that. Get right and meet me up there. That's right. But we're going to take an intermission. So who has a mic? for? We're going we're gonna to go with Deacon Dale. And then we got sisters. I, want, I, put, I found some little clips. Are we ready for that? And I probably do want the, one. The last one is real funny because we was having this conversation. Sister Angela in this room. Let's just look at some of these. I want to bring a little bit of humor. I don't know if they're showing this front screen. You guys may have to look to the side. You know, because the saying is, you know, how when they go to grandparents' house, you know, why do all parent, all children think that when the grandchildren come? So this one says, our generation will be the weirdest grandparents. They're playing with video games. <laughs> how, is there, are there any grandparents that play video games with their grandchildren? I don't know how to do that. I, look, I see someone back there with their hand raised. They say their grandparents play with them. Okay, what's the next one? Look at the room. Me, thanks for watching the kids. Mom, please don't feed them sugar. Grandma, I won't. Four seconds after I leave. <laughs> you know, we tell, you know how you tell them, don't give them any candy or any of that. They put on that sugar high. And, then, and, I, and I'm guilty of that as a spiritual grandmother here at church. I give them all that candy on Wednesday night and, then I, and we have cake and all that and send them home. Okay, these next are, uh, are funny. You know, I had to go and pull some, some, some find some black grandmama. In me. Go ahead. Oh, uh, you guys, what's the top part? You guys, the top part says something. When, no, when grandma is ready to leave and nobody is taking her home. That's her look. <laughs> I can see Mother Foster doing that. Amen. <laughs> oh, man. The next one. When your grandmama finds out you haven't eaten for the whole day and your parents walk through the door. <laughs> you know how you know how you you know how y'all grant your children? Listen, Danielle was a super snitch at three. 
So my grandmother had this thing, which is, I think, one of the most world's greatest grandmother. My grandmother, Ms. Dot, who actually raised me and did a great grandmother. My grandmother had this thing where she did not, you know, black socks, because it make, we're in Florida and it make your feet, and so she would tell me not to put black socks. So the first thing Danielle would do when she gets to, my, get to her grandmother's house is to make sure she tells that she has on black socks. <laughs> then the other big P is that my grandmother have, and I'm still this way today, when I see Addie with a dress on, the first thing I do is lift her dress up to see if she have on shorts. So this particular time, I did not put shorts on her. She gets off the bus, she goes in, and she said, you see, Grandma, she ain't put no shorts on me. I said, if she's old enough to tell you I ain't put no shorts on her, she old enough to put them shorts under her dress herself. <laughs> Amen. And so the next one. Now, we had a conversation about this on Friday. When you slip up and say lies instead of telling stories in front of your grandmama, and it says only black people would get this. And this just popped up because <laughs> how many of you guys know in the African American family, you cannot, if you said, uh, if you told your grandma, you lying, that was like your teeth was going to get back slapped out your mouth. Okay? We, we, that's, that, and that's why. Now, let me tell you how funny this is. Anne Marie, she's probably watching the well. Anne Marie is Caucasian. So, Sister DeAndra and I, we was talking about certain things that she was asking about, and we were sharing culture. And this one of the ones we talked about. And this morning, when I happened to look it up, and so I sent it to both DeAndra and her, because DeAndra and I, we was telling her, you know, you couldn't say that. You know how you sit, you know, grandmothers have a way that when you, you know, they talking and you know, children over there moving and they give you that look. You already knew what time it was. That's right. They didn't have to touch you. You just knew that when company left, you was going to be dealt with. <laughs> Amen? You knew that. Bro. But these newfangled, what y'all think about these newfangled parents that say, don't spank your children? Oh. 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 <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not talking, so we're, and I'm, I'm saying this because I just seen something where it was uh, Billy Graham's daughter was um, talking about when they said right, all this is happening because they took God out of the world. And that's one of the things. She used a man's name who actually brought that about to bring all this commotion up about not spanking your children because you're going to break their little spirits. But look at the spirits that's in them. Amen. You, anyone you can add to that. What, what is the problem? Let me add it this way in case we got people watching on the web. Um, what do you believe the proper way in chastising a child? Or do you think that children should not receive payments nowadays? I think that you still should do like you did what Deuteronomy said back in the day. You still got to train up a child in the way he should go. Amen. And you got to start it like they start it as soon as they come out of the womb. And as soon as they're able to understand right from wrong, you start chastising them. And, and teach them obedience. Yeah. Yeah. Teach them to honor their mother and their father. And I think if you get a hold to them at a younger age and don't let them have their way, amen, and that's where, it's, that's where the beginning starts. you got to start it early. And when you hit things early, then it won't manifest and it won't grow. So yeah. you still got to go back to the Bible from the beginning. Yeah. Chastise your child. Make them honor and respect you. I, I, I got a little girl, a, 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 a little girl, grandchild is seven. And when she comes to our house, or any of them come to our house, they know that they can't act just any kind of way. That's right. That's right. They know that grandma and grandpa are Christians, and they know that we stand a, a, for them to honor and respect us. And some of them, the little seven-year-old sometimes will try to throw a tantrum with her father. <laughs> But he, he don't play that neither. But you know how the kids will try you? Yeah. He said, babe, we don't do that here. That's what Amen. I let them know. Mother then, Foster? Yeah, no. I, have a, I have some grandkids with a couple of them. Now, take the one over there. She's sweet. And she always try to help me. But some of them, are, you, they, they, it gets respectable, you know? And I have not helped raise all of them mostly. But they just, but I said, I, I'm not going to uh, uh, hold nothing against her. I pray for him, you know. So I keep him in, I keep him in prayer all the time for him. So I try not to hold nothing against him. But sometimes Amen. they make you so mad. <laughs> you know how it is. <laughs> they get on your last reserve. 
I, I call it you're going to get the blessed hand. Go ahead, Mother Foster. You feel like you want to lose your religion sometimes, but you hold it back. <laughs> Mother Foster, you going to add to that? I got a bunch of them I do, but I did, I did pray for them. Okay. <laughs> so I thank God for them anyway. The I'm here to live to see them, you know. Amen. I'm 87 years old, you know. And I have a twin sister. She don't have no kids. But she helped raise, you know, some of my grandkids at that time. But I did thank God that I'm here. Amen. He, he okay, we're going to go to Mother Foster. You add to that. And I got Deacon and Mother Patton. And we got Deacon Dale. Uh, I believe, I don't want to quote, take nothing from the word or add to the word. But I think it's somewhere in the Bible that says beat them. <laughs> Listen. We don't want to beat them. But that's the truth. You want to you discipline. It, and well, because we're talking about the old English, it does say beat, uh, beat them, them and they shall know? not die and to keep them out of hell. That's Most it. Don't know. It's uh, in the Bible. Know, it's in there. It says beat Go them. Go ahead, y'all scholars. Now, nobody don't want to beat up. them. You understand it's, what I'm saying? It's in the word. But I, <laughs> believe, I believe in putting the, I believe in, you should check. You okay, so, so y'all newfangled parents. We're I'm not trying to be funny. Uh, it's scripture. But but that I believe it says that I, I mean the preachers yeah. should know is it not in there like that? But we don't right, want to right. beat them, yeah. do we? Yeah. <laughs> Proper but discipline. We, but but uh, I believe in <laughs> hey I believe the old time way. It it was good enough for my mother. It was uh -huh. good enough for my father. It's good enough for me. And I you know I saw parents be very strict with their children, and their children are still here. I yeah. mean. I uh, mean, I know you can abuse. You can be, mm -hmm. It's lots of abuse. We're not talking about sex. But, but we got people watching on love. the web. We're, we're not talking, talking about, about love. Yes. Let me add, that child up. Mother, let me add love. this in because you know we got this Facebook stuff. You know how people try to come in. And, oh, praise We're not talking God. about. <laughs> <laughs> we're not talking about being abusive. <laughs> Amen. We're talking about discipline. Even God says, if, yes. I, if, I, if, I, if I do not chastise, yeah. if I chastise you, that what? It's love. Yes, you know. If Statistic, I have a master in social work, okay? Statistically shows that a child who has not had anything said to them yes. versus a child that even they may have been, uh, you know, wrongfully abu you know, abused in the wrong way, that it shows more statistically for them because they had what? Physical touch and still attention. Yes. Versus a child that was left and had no one saying anything to them or showing them any form of attention. That's statistics. Yes. Okay? So what we're saying is proper discipline. Yes. Listen, yes. I, yes. I'm right. 51. I, was, I went and picked my own switch, mother. I, went, this, I, I tell you, no lie. This tree grew on us. And when I turned about 18, all of a sudden that tree disappeared. I, t I would go pick my own switch and my grandmother... I know when I did something wrong, she would, I, I went out and picked my switch, and it wasn't overly abusive. I thank God for that right now. Right. I got my last behind whooping from my daddy now that, at 16, because that just took me over the top. I could not believe that that man spanked me on the front porch. <laughs> and you know what? I never got another spanking ever again. But my father disciplined, disciplined me at the age of 16. Right. Amen? Amen. And so we have to, um, so we're not talking about being abusive or what have you, because we have some parents, you know, and time out. Now, let me tell you, time out, you have to know your children. Right. Time out worked for some of them, and some of them time out don't work. Right. Point and example, time out did not work for Danielle. Uh -huh. <laughs> now, Danielle's the type of child, if I raised my, raise my voice, she would get together. But the reason why time out didn't work for Danielle in daycare was because Danielle would hit the children and then go put her own self in timeout. <laughs> so what you gonna do with that? It, 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 so I had to come up. Danielle did not like cleaning her room, so I had to. So you have to find out what works for each mm -hmm. child. That's right. Well, Amen. I, I know when bringing up my 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 daughter, which at the time was my only <laughs> one. <laughs> put <the> head <laughs> My daughter. You know what I'm saying is, you know, uh, she would do something. And with my anger, I've always never disciplined her. She knows that when I was mad. I never did, but I prom if I promised her a whooping, then she's going to get it that day. But I wouldn't whoop her maybe when I was angry right there. No. But I saw a time, one time, she, <laughs> she went to bed. Ooh, wait. And my, my husband thought I was crazy. Though. And we was there watching television. And it was getting late, and almost by 11 something. 
And I said, oh, that's right. I told Lavana I was going to whoop her. <laughs> I said, oh, oh. I said, oh. I said, let me go. So I woke her up. I said, you remember I told you I was going to whoop you today? And I whooped her, you know? Before I got and 12 o'clock. That's right. And she, told, and she asked the Lord to have mercy upon my soul. Forgive her, Father, <laughs> for she knows not what she do. <laughs> Glory, glory. She, was a, she was young. She was about yeah. 10, 10, 11. She sure did. I woke up. I said, girl, you remember I promised to whoop you. Amen. So I woke Let's up. Let's know. Let and it she down. said, Lord, forgive her, for she knows not what she's doing. Amen. So, you know, but I mean, you know, like you said, you know, I did our love, you know. I tried to do the best I could by raising her and everything. Amen. But, uh, Let's get Deacon Dale. Yeah. Let me see the other hands I can see. We're going to be wrapping up. Uh -huh. I, we got some gifts to give out. Deacon uh, Dale and then we got... Um, I almost got scared. Dr. Wright. <laughs> Let's, get, we got, well, let's get the question oh. first. My question is this. It's a, uh, I'm just going to ask because I just, I just got curious. What is your favorite food that you love to cook, why you love to cook it, and what is the secret ingredient? Secret ingredient. They don't tell their secrets. Just tell her what the favorite food is. You have to come over. Amen. Just tell her what the favorite dish is. <laughs> you got to be slick. Uh, okay, back in our days, we coming up, they didn't have, you had no favorite food. Whatever your mother cooked, you better eat it. Right. And, you right. and right now, you see these kids here now, say, I don't want that. I don't eat that. You eat, I have to go to bed hungry. So, that way, <laughs> so that's what we did. So, and and when, we, when we went to church, we didn't run around like a little kid here. We had to sit down. That's right. And, we, and, and, and if you got up and, and in church act up, they say, when you go home, you know, you're going to get it. You're going to get it when you get home. <laughs> and, and when you get home, they say, bring me that belt. Go get that belt in there. <laughs> and we had to get our own belt or go out there and get that trish. And we, they brought, bring, bring, bring the trish in there. And they whoop our legs. But nowadays, kids don't, I don't know. They, 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 yeah. Now they don't, they don't want this. They don't like that. But back in our day, you ate whatever you had in front of you. That's right. That's right. You had beans for breakfast, beans for supper, beans in the night. <laughs> <laughs> right. Amen. You had the spaghetti that morning, you had it at night, and you had the supper. You didn't have no different food. <laughs> okay, next dish. What's your favorite dish? Corn pone. Tell them what that is. It's corn, I mean, it's chili, mm -hmm. spicy, really spicy chili uh -huh. on the bottom, and cornbread over the top of it. You're bringing that for the feast, right? <laughs> <laughs> we will see that dish next month. Amen. <laughs> Go ahead, Pastor. Uh, well, I still like chicken. I still like chicken. I, I was fed chicken when I was young, and I still like chicken. Amen. Mother Foster, what's your dish? I really don't have no favorite dish, as you can see. I like it all. <laughs> <laughs> I like it all. And, and right now, my favorite, favorite place, I guess, is any buffet. Because I don't do no good. <laughs> But when, I, but when I did used to do lots of cooking, my favorite, I mean, you know, I, I just it was holiday dinners. I enjoyed fixing the turkey and the dressing and, mashed, you know, mashed potatoes and gravy and macaroni and cheese and collard greens. And all. That's, what I, that's what I did, you know. Okay. But, uh, that's my favorite. Amen. Holiday. Mother, but you got a favorite dish that you like yeah, to cook? Yeah, turkey and dressing. Turkey yeah, and dressing. You didn't have that on Thanksgiving. You didn't have that every day like you didn't have now. The only, only time you had that was on Thanksgiving and Christmas, something like that. See, you I'm the same have, way. You didn't yeah. have no. Mm -hmm. We get my macaroni and no, cheese on Thanksgiving no. and Christmas. Mm -hmm. I don't cook it no other time of the year. And greens with mashed Macar potatoes, too. Yeah. Um, yes. Dr. Wright, and then we have uh, Minister, I said, uh, Minister Dante, then we come back to DeAndra, um, Anjane. I just wanted to tell a funny story that goes with Mother Foster. My mother used to tell us. Tuesday, you remind me to whip you. Thursday, you remind me to whip you. Friday, it might be Wednesday, but Saturday, 
you remind me to whip you. And if we didn't, we got in worse trouble. So we would go to her and say, it's Wednesday. We're supposed to get a whip and we get one. My God. That, that, that's the honor system. Um, let me get, and then I got, after Ajane, I have Brother Jerome. Um, Mr. Dante, you should have your microphone already. Where's your microphone? Okay, well, well that run quickly. That run quickly. Uh, I just want to ask, because I, I got one child and another child on the way, and so I just want to get a little bit of wisdom on this, because my understanding has always been when it comes to discipline, there's the teaching side of discipline where you teach them better, and then there's like the whooping side where it's like correction, and I just want to know when do you teach versus when you whoop, you know, because... <laughs> uh, I say you, you teach as you give them that spanking. Really? Oh. <laughs> That's right. I'm answer this for everybody. That's right. You teach. That's teaching them right there. As you give them the spanking. Yeah. Now yeah. remember, that's not always. Explain to um, them. Uh, explain to, to them. Yeah. Well, now that's yeah. not always that you, but remember, we're not always giving a spanking. Mm. My tongue lashes are probably worse than the spanking. So if you get the tongue lash and the spanking, it should make you not want to come back for no more. When Amen. I, I think when teaching is is when, like, <laughs> where is Eddie? But anyway, like if it's Eddie's at my house, and I say, Eddie, don't do this. Don't you do this? Okay, that's teaching her. Don't do it. Mm. When she does it again, <laughs> and I say, that's that's when you get that spanking. <laughs> Yeah. So she, that's it, you know. Yeah. So you're so, teaching them when you tell them don't do nothing, you know. You teach yes, them don't do this, don't do that, don't do that. The whooping comes after they, when they learn, you know, burn child dress fire. Yeah, you that's know, two or, you got to redirect. You know, my thing was after two or three directions, then that was, you know, more. So we're not always, I'm not always giving spankings or what have you. So I'm teaching along the way. And then when I did give spankings, you want, you're a part of the family. You can ask, I would say by their age. I gave the lick. So even when the boys got to be six, you know, when they got by 16, they stopped really getting. So if you did something that warranted, like I really tolerate lying or stealing or something like that, you knew how, by your age, you knew how many licks you was going to get. Soon the position, I mean, Katwan and Kanab was pretty good at this. Only AJ was the one that was going to talk his way out of it or be wiggling around. You was 12 years old. You got in trouble. You, and, that, and that was established in my household beforehand. They knew that certain things were not tolerated and allowed. You know, not cleaning your room. I didn't do stuff like that. But if I got a call that you done did something from school or you done did something to someone, however age you were, those how many licks you was going to get. 10 licks, 11 licks, 12 licks. You didn't want them licks. What does that mean? Be obedient. And, but that was established. That was my household. So everybody, they, no, it, it, it didn't come as a surprise. Oh, I'm getting ready to get a spanking. No, you already knew that that was coming. And then when they were smaller, AJ, he was the main, I developed this when AJ was small. So, you know, five or five. And I would say, say, flee in the name of Jesus. I would tell them little spirits, of, and they would say, flee in the name of Jesus. Flee in the name of Jesus. I would have it be a part of the healing process. A part of their deliverance. So you can tell them when you give them that. Flee in the name of Jesus. T teach them to say that. Flee in the name of Jesus. What is that saying? Telling them little spirits to leave them. Amen. I'm not really spanking you. It's the devil that's getting you in trouble for this spanking. That's right. Hallelujah. Go ahead, Anjane. Um, My question was, um, you know, becoming a new believer in Christ and giving you and your, you and your kids over to Christ. What did you do like to stay fully submitted to God and his word, even, you know, just now coming in into the church or a new believer. What is she saying? I didn't hear it. As a new believer, how do you stay continually connected um, with the Lord? Yeah, I, I mean, there's a whole pastor one, yeah. Yeah. Yes. So how do you, okay, let, let me put it this way. We have a lot of, say, for like single parents, or we have like millennium generation and even generation Z that have children. And what I was having a conversation with someone is that what, when I was even ministering on Saturday is that we have a generation 
that don't know the Lord. We really got two generations that don't know the Lord. That's right. Amen. So what do we say to the younger generation? And like for me, I know the children in the room, they're a little rumbunctious or what have you. But I thank God for those parents that are here with them because you have many that use the excuse that I'm not coming to church because of my child. And here at GBFIC, that's what the, I think the mothers are for. You see a child that's a little bit rambunctious and Mrs. Smith, she ain't really on her job today because Mrs. Smith over here receiving. But normally Mrs. Smith is the one that we done got the child and took him out the, and took him out the room. But today Mrs. Smith says she's celebrating Grandparents Day. Hallelujah. I just thought I'd throw that out there. I'd throw that out there. Amen. She's normally one that does that. And that's how it should be for us to be able, and that's what the Titus 2 ministry is about. Amen. Is that we should, should be modeling and helping those that need, you know, help or what have you. Amen. So that's what, you know, I'm, I'm saying. So how you, what would you say to the younger generation of mothers and fathers who, um, even to the point they may just, okay, I have children that... I'm not, I, I don't need to do things with the Lord. I got to take them to the basketball game, football game, PTA meeting and all that. Now these uh, are saved young people or still just trying to get in church or... Saved. Let's just go with saved. They right. need help. If, Let's help them. So if you are saved and we believe that you have a lifestyle that you're living and a lifestyle is something that you do every day. So, we're, we definitely, is you're getting from your pastors to learn how to pray right. every day. Put God first. Read your word. And that will help you, you know, because every time you read the word, you're going to find something in the word that will help you to encourage you mm -hmm. or help you to grow. Right. So that helps your relationship get closer to God. And, and by that way, that helps you to get stronger. Um, I had a son and growing up, and he hated to go to church. I mean, I mean, I, I don't want to say he hated, but he just didn't want to be there. And I'd say, okay, tell me why. And he said, because. And I'd say, okay, well, you come and go with me anyway. And the Lord said, if you can get him here and sit him down, he said, I'll put the word in him. And he did. Even to this day, he will call me. He's the one that lives in Arkansas. He will call me, and he said, send me some oil. I'm needing some warfare. I'm needing this. I mean, even to this day, because he was sitting in the back. Even though he didn't, you know, but he reverenced God enough that he would sit him in the back. But God was putting the word in him as the days go by. I didn't have to say, okay, you have to come. But... Out, my husband would say, out of your respect for your mom, you need to go to church, you know, because you're underneath her, our household. And he said, so you need to go to church. And he would. He would sit in the back. But he did learn. And like I said, even to this day, I still get, um, you know, texts and stuff. Mom, I need you to pray about this. I need you to do battle for this or that. So he remembers what God had put in him even to this day. That's right. it, um, Brother Jerome, question, then we're going to be wrapping it up. Speak in your mic, son. Sister Kira, can you can't well, help me with my bags. Ever since uh, with my family and stuff, because I've been locked up for a long time, and I never had nobody, you know. When I got in the streets, I did everything it's wrong. Mm -hmm. And but now, when I look at my mama, she's like, you learn from your mistakes. You know what I'm saying? You just can't keep on going through your mistakes over and over and over. You know what I'm saying? Some got to, you got to show the right path. And so that's why I'm be trying to tell my nieces and nephews, I don't want them to go the same path I've been through. You know, because I'm, I, I, I come here, you know what I'm saying, to, to know the word of God, you know, because uh, I've, been, I've been single for a long time, and as people like me, your family got, your brothers got, 
baby mamas and kids and so what about you? <laughs> well, you gonna have some kids. I said when I find a white person. Amen. And uh, so, so every I asked guys like, can you send me one? <laughs> I was like, can you send me one? <laughs> You know? <laughs> Amen. Amen. I've been asking God to send me one, you know? And, and as the boys at the group home, they be turning us stuff and acting fools. So I had to call Shanika, like, Shanika, can you take me out to hell for a little bit? Can we go somewhere for like 15, 20 minutes? And she's like, just stay there for a little bit. I'll come, you know? So we'll go out to eat or something. And she was like, Well, why 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 you why you why what happened at the group home? I said, Sis, they be acting up, you know. <laughs> I I want to well, get we, out. And I what said, we gonna do for Brother Jerome, Brother Jerome, the men, you guys hear his heart. So in the congregation, that's what when you don't grow up with grandmothers or stuff like that. That is the reason why God created that family and church. So all these, all these grandmas and grandfathers, they hear Jer Jerome's heart. Amen. And so they're going to be praying for you. So now you have some surrogate grandmothers and grandfathers. Right. Amen. 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 Glory. Uh, Dr. Wright, did you have some? Yeah. Dr. Wright had one question. And then I need, we're going to wrap it. I have the grandmothers. I need the grandmothers to stand after Dr. Wright. Get question, get answer. This is very controversial, but I want to ask the panel. What do you think about the philosophy that uh, so many people have now that you don't make your child go to church. They go if they want to or they don't have to go. <laughs> I, didn't, I did not make my kids go to church. They went to church. I didn't make them automatically know when I got up and got ready. <laughs> Church is where we going on Sunday. Uh, you know, uh, the Bible said, bring up a child the way you go and he will not stray, you know. And, and, and I done my part. Now what my children did after they got uh, that age, you know, I, I led them there. I, I took them there. You know, I didn't send them to church. I took them there. I did not tell them what to do in church. They saw what to do in church because they saw the way I act in church. Man. You know, uh, I prayed. Uh, I had some, we were just talking about my grandson. I remember I brought him up here to the, uh, see the uh, uh, mighty clouds of joy. And he was a young man. And he was up there clapping and praising God harder than I was, you know. I, 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 I talked, I didn't just teach him. They saw me. They saw what I was doing, you know. They saw the joy. I find, hey, I find it a joy serving the Lord. I don't know about nobody else, you know. I believe in making a joyful noise unto the Lord. And, and so my kids know that. So I didn't send them. I, I, I took them to church. And that's what I feel that we should do. Young people that's in here. Don't send your children. Go with your children. Take them to church, you know. Lead them. Amen. Lead them in the way that you want them to go. I want to pull nobody out from what Mother you. is saying. I know the pastor's going to say something. One of the important things I heard her say is that she had joy when she came. Mm -hmm. And children are more as caught than taught. Mm -hmm. How, what do they see you doing when you're in church? Are you mm -hmm. on your telephone? Mm -hmm. Are you just sitting there not involved or what have you? Mm -hmm. Amen. And so that's very important, not only that when you're bringing them, that they see that you're involved. You can mm -hmm. see some lineages. Uh, when you read the Bible, there was a lineage of deacons. Mm -hmm. There was a lineage of pastors. Mm -hmm. There was a lineage of carpenters. There was a lineage, you know, of centrists, you know, because it's, and that's how God, that's why it says door el door. Amen. And that's the reason why I say the apple don't fall too far from the tree. But how about that people some good things? I make it very hard for my children not to be able to receive from me. That's right. Take the good, leave the bad. That's what I did with my grandma. My grandma do everything right, but she, I took, I took the good and I just had common enough sense to leave the bad. I wasn't going to say, ooh, but grandma was this or my mom was this. Or what have you. I took the good things and left the bad. What they say, that's what you do. That's what the cow do. The cow, you supposed to what? Eat the hay. You eat what? Eat the hay, spit out the sticks. Amen. Let's not major in the minors about our parents and our grandparents. You just do better. 
Amen. Go ahead. Amen. My mother did make me go, and all of us went, and it, it, it paid off. And, and the word of God says, me and my house are going to serve the Lord. I took my kids, and they went. We went. My wife and I went, and they went. 